the fox and the little prince were finally alone. So the fox said to the brave boy, And now for the secret I promised to tell you. The little prince eagerly leaned closer so he could learn the secret of the clever fox. The eye never sees the true essence of things. And so, if it's truth that you seek, then you must use the heart. The little prince repeated to himself, The eye never sees the true essence of things. Mommy, don't stop. Read more to us. Oh no, darling. Come on. You have to go to bed now. You have school tomorrow, and I have a lot of work to do. Good night, my darlings. Dream sweet dreams. I love you. Mommy? Yes, honey? Why won't Daddy come back here? Asla, dear. You ask this every night. You must stop asking it. Tell me, Mom, please. It's because Mom and Dad got a divorce. Dad doesn't love us anymore. You're wrong, Emma, honey. Sometimes people get very tired, and they need to take a rest. Your daddy was working too hard, so he had to go far away for a while. <coughs> but you work hard too. We have to go away. Are you going to leave us too? Oh, now how on earth could I ever do that? I promise I'll never leave you guys. Come on now, time for all good children to be in bed. But I'm not sleepy. Are you okay? I'm late for my job. I think you need to see a doctor. You don't look good. I'm fine now. Thanks. I'm much better now. Thank you. <coughs> my friend. Hmm? Can I help you? I'm Sally Demir. I represent the Free Voice newspaper. I'm here to interview Hashmet Marich. You, sir. I warned you not to be late again. Oh, please, sir, don't. It's the last time, I promise. Okay, okay. Now get on to yes, it. Yes, thank you. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Marich. Sally Demir from the Free Voice newspaper. Oh, uh, why, hello there, young man. Come in. Come on in. Uh, don't be shy. Sit down. Sit down. Thank you. I'm sure you'd like a drink. No, thanks. I'm fasting. Hmm? I'm writing a story for my paper about factory workers and the safety conditions in the workplace. I'd like to ask you a few questions for my article. Uh, why, of course. Uh, sure, go right ahead. But unfortunately, I'll only be able to give you a few minutes of my time. See, this is a large factory, and I'm a busy man. I know. Then let's start right now. You use paint and chemical materials here in your factory. What precautions do you take to protect your employees from these poisons? Good, good. Uh, that's good. You ask a very good question. Uh, we're very safe here. Uh, I believe in treating my employees like family. My workers are never put in danger. Their safety is my first priority. Always. So 
sooner. I don't know what to do with you. You come in late, and then you work so slowly. I'm sorry, sir. Don't you know how many people are lined up outside our door just waiting to take your job away from you? Please, it won't happen again. We'll see. I speak with the factory's doctor? I'd also like to see the company's medical files, your employee records, and take some photographs. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. You can. But please keep in mind, you shouldn't do anything that will slow down production. Uh, but first, I'll have you talk to our doctor. I'll call him right now and tell him you're coming. Thank you. Uh, honey, can you get me Dr. Hollett? Hello, Doctor. We have a visitor that would like to talk to you. That's right, that's right. He's a reporter. Give him a few minutes of your time. I see. If you can. Of course, Mr. Marich. I know what to do with him, sir. Feeling better? You're fine. You're just a little tired. Like I told you last time, you need to get more sleep. There's this pain in my back. Sometimes it's unbearable. Sleep on the floor. It'll go away. I'm giving you a 15-day leave of absence so you can get some sleep. You'll be fine, I tell you. Doctor, I can't do that. The company won't pay me for the time. I need to work. You have to listen to your doctor. You can't work in this condition, but you'll feel better soon. All right, sir. Oh. 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 Can I sit down for a minute? Take that again. medicine as I directed, and you'll be just fine. <laughs> hello there. Why, hello. So it's you. When I saw you this morning, I could see that you were sick. I hope it's nothing serious. Oh, she's fine. She just needs a little rest. I'm sending her home. We treat our workers like family here. We're doing everything that needs to be done. So you're equipped to run tests and take x-rays in this office? Uh. I've been working in this factory for years. I know who's really sick and who is not. Besides, if need be, we can send patients to the hospital to take care of those things. That is all. I'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. Have a good day. I can answer your questions. I'd rather interview your patient first. Wait a minute, wait a minute. She's just a simple factory worker. She just wants attention. I'm telling you! is just great, I tell you. <coughs> Suna, ma'am. Suna, ma'am. Suna? Oh, God. Suna. Excuse me, are you related to the patient? Could you please tell me what's wrong with her, doctor? She has a serious condition. What is it? Lung cancer. A very advanced stage. Tell me, what's the prognosis? The cancer is too widespread. I'm sorry to say that she's beyond the ability of medical science to treat her. Unfortunately, chemotherapy can't help her. Nothing can help her. She has six months to live at the most. I see. The patient must be told. Right now? A patient needs to know when the end is near. There'll be arrangements she'll want to make, people she'll want to see. So the sooner she finds out, the better. Hmm. Hi. Can I go now, Doctor? My children are waiting for me at home. Please sit down, Suna, ma'am. I think we should talk. All right. Well, first of all, I promise I'll take it much easier from now on. But you see, I have three children to take care of, Doctor. And it's not easy. Okay, I know I kind of overdid things with my work schedule. But from now on, I'll be more careful. So please, just let me go now. Tell me, where's your husband? Well, we're, uh, we got divorced. A year now. Is there any way we can talk to him? He hasn't called me for a while. I don't even know where he is. I see. Suna, 
I'm sorry to say that I have some bad news. How bad, doctor? Mm. So it's really bad. Okay, tell me. Suna, we found some cancerous cells. They're very widespread. They have spread into your lungs. Okay. What are we going to do about it? Do I have an operation or something else? I strongly suggest that you stay here. We'll prepare a bed for you in the hospital. That way, we can keep you as comfortable as possible. But I have children. I need to live. You must help me stay alive for them. You have to. I can't leave my children alone. They're so young. How will they survive? What are my kids going to do without me? <laughs> is the woman about to lose her life? Who can say when death is at hand? The children. I'm worried about them. What will happen to them? With every breath a person takes, they either die two times or they live. What does that mean? If you can't inhale air, you will die. And if you can't exhale it, you will also die. We are shown mercy two times with each breath that we take. Understood. We cannot know what the great mercy that completely surrounds us has planned for this situation, or any for that matter. So the issue of life or death is not important. Understanding God's will and one's own purpose, that's what's important. Those who have found Him will have nothing to lose. And those who lose Him gain nothing. My little rose truly loved me because I loved it so much, said the little prince. And because I did not offend it, it did not offend me. What does the word offend mean? I don't know. Fatma, do you know what offend means? Offend. It's when you hurt somebody. Let's pretend that I say something to you that's really very mean. It's not a nice thing to do, but I say it anyway. So offend means to hurt. Do you think that dad offended mom? Hmm, don't know. Fatma, when is mommy going to come back home? She'll be back home before you know it. Mm. Maybe she got the chance to work some overtime. She's working extra to buy those new sneakers I want. It's all my fault. Hey, don't blame yourself like that. Please. You children should always remember that your mom really loves you. Trust me, okay? Now come sit down at the table. I've made your favorite dinner for you. <laughs> hmm. What am I going to do? What now? And who will take care of my kids? Dr. Hollett said there was nothing wrong with me. Did he lie? Did he? Why would he do something like that to me? Because he didn't tell you the truth, Dr. Hollett stole your chance of an early diagnosis. But why? Tell me. Why did he do such a thing? Unfortunately, some people think of their own interests instead of the health of others. Now what? What am I going to do now? I'm dead. Oh, God. What's going to happen to my kids? I don't have anybody. I don't have anybody I can leave my children to. What will they do without me? Oh, God. Oh, God, please show me a way. God help me. He will. As long as you don't lose your faith and keep hope in your heart. 
With every hardship comes a remedy. Oh, Sally. I know death comes for all. And I can't run away. I can't. Even little babies sometimes die. I know I can't understand the justice of it. But I can accept that. But when I think about what's going to happen to my kids, oh, it's so hard. Oh, God. Please give me the strength to go on. Oh, God, Lord, please help me. Please give me strength. What about your ex-husband? I don't even know where he is. It's been a year since he called me. Or the kids. He doesn't care. If I may ask you, why did you two separate? Money. Hakan liked very expensive things. You see, his parents are wealthy, and my own family is poor. His father did not approve. We got married, and we had three children. But then, Hakan began to long for his former way of life. He grew more and more distant. And then he left. That's right. He left. Maybe it's time your ex-husband faced reality. <laughs> time for him to act like a father. I think Hakan might be my last hope. But how am I going to find him? How am I going to tell him what's happened? And will he believe me when I do? But, like you said... With every hardship, there comes a remedy. <sighs> With every hardship, there comes a remedy. If the witnesses are ready too, we can start the ceremony. Hakan Tolga, do you take Nazan Birlik to be your beloved wife? I do. And Nazan Birlik, do you take Hakan Tolga to be your husband? I do. And you witness this? We do. We do. Well then, by the power vested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. was married before, right? To a girl who worked in a factory. But of course it didn't work out. Old habits die hard. He married his old fiance after all. Congratulations. Congrats. I'm happy for you, sweetheart. Thank you, Papa. I'm so happy for you, sweetheart. You've made me a very happy man today. And if you start giving me grandchildren very soon, I'll be even happier. <sighs> Will you do that? I think that's up to your daughter, Fikret. I don't want to think about kids, Papa. I have too much to do right now. I don't have time to run after children. Is that the way I told you I wanted to serve the food? The center table isn't even ready yet. Do you realize that? I'm really sorry, ma'am. Shut up and get the center table ready. Nazan, weren't you a bit harsh? You have to be with them. These people aren't like us. Everyone should know their place. They're servants for a reason. We're just better than them. You shouldn't be so prejudiced, honey. I don't want to get into this with you, Papa. Ah, oh, Sevda, how nice to see you. Hakan, didn't you invite your father? My dad and I haven't spoken in ten years. In fact, he disowned me. He never accepted my first marriage. To be honest, my dad has the same mindset as Nazan. Unless the years have changed him, which I doubt. Here you go, sir. Thanks, Sveti. Would you like anything else? My whole life has gone by. And take a good look at me now. I'm alone. I have houses. I have money. I have cars. But what use are they to me? I'm still alone. 
I'm going to sell the factory, the cars, the houses, everything. I'm going to give it all over to some charity. I can't take it with me now, can I? We go to our graves alone. Oh, you shouldn't say such things, sir. You think I can cheat death, Fetty? Perhaps, sir, you'd like me to find your son? You know I don't want his name mentioned in this house. Foolish boy that he was. He had to go and marry a poor woman. Without, him, without ever asking for my consent. And so I disowned him. It's his fault I'm alone. Without grandkids. <laughs> you can go now. Thank you for everything. Don't mention it. Good luck. Sorry I'm late. This way. Thank you very much. I've given you a lot of trouble. No, I'm happy to help. I thought about it last night. I want to tell you my story about the factory and what happened to me because I worked there. Maybe your article will help prevent what happened to me from happening to someone else. Besides, I don't have anything to lose. But first, I'd really like to help you find your ex-husband. Oh, all right. What am I gonna tell my children? <laughs> I had to go away to get better. Children, I want you to meet my new friend, Sally. Since I won't be able to be around for a while, Sally will be looking after all of you. Why won't you be around, Mommy? Uh, let's go inside, and I'll tell you in there. Come on, let's go, okay? It's very sad, isn't it? It is. It doesn't seem fair to her. Let's look at it this way. Can you understand the story if you read only a few pages of it? No, you can't. Like that famous description of an elephant by the blind man. So then we should not be blind. We'll make up our minds when we see the entire story. How will this story turn out? Can we see the future, Sally? No. But you were talking about the whole book. Yes, of course I was. It is by the Almighty that first the winds blow and throws everything asunder, then the clouds come together by that same wind. And those clouds bring forth the blessings of rain. A simple sign for the wise. <coughs> See, kids, I'm afraid I'm a little sick. Like I was saying earlier, the doctor... Eh, the doctor said... He said you worked too much, didn't he? I keep on telling you, Mom, from now on. I'm going to do everything around here. I'm old enough. Thank you, Emery, but it's not that. From now on, you take it easy. And I don't really need those sneakers. We can help with the housework. We'll do the cleaning. Won't we, Oslet? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, my babies. Look how you guys have grown up and want to help your mommy. Oh, my babies. I love you all. Hakan! Who are you? My name is Sali Demir. 
I'm a reporter and I'm writing a story about working conditions in local factories. And why should I care? I believe many of the workers in one factory were sickened by poor conditions. And one of the workers is your ex-wife, Suna. Suna's health condition is not my concern. You'll excuse me. What if she's very sick? So sick she will never get better. Your children really need their father right now. <sighs> what if you're lying to my husband? What if you're some sort of thief? What if you're just trying to get money from us? Nazan, just hold on. You want me to hold on? <laughs> okay, you can have all the time you want. Mr. Merritt? And who are you? I'm one of your workers from the factory floor. So? Uh, uh, can I... Can I sit down? Huh. If you must. <coughs> so? <coughs> go ahead. I'm listening. The thing is, I'm sick. I'm sorry to hear that. What do you want? Some money? I don't have very much time. Doctors say it, it's cancer. But the factory's doctor kept saying that there was nothing wrong with me. You see, had I been correctly diagnosed earlier, it could have been treated. But it wasn't. And I have three kids. I'd like to receive some compensation that I can leave behind for them. Now wait. I don't know how you got sick. Mr. Marriage, come on. You and I both know how I got sick. Oh, how is that? Have you ever visited your own factory, sir? <coughs> as soon as you step onto the floor of the factory, a strong chemical smell hits you. But after a while, you get used to that smell, and you breathe in that air for ten hours. You almost stop noticing what it's doing to your body. We're just too busy working to worry about it. You see, none of us who work there can complain because we'll lose our jobs. My kids, I'm all they have, so I work as many hours as I possibly can. But if the factory took some safety precautions like they do in other factories... Wait, do you know how much that costs? What am I, made of gold? Look... We both know why I'm sick. You know all about what happened to the workers that took a leave of absence and didn't come back. Doctors have been misdiagnosing illnesses just to save money for the company. You must give me that compensation for my children. It's the only thing I can leave behind for them. They don't have anyone except me. Listen up. If I did that, handed out compensation to everybody who came in here with their hands out, well, I wouldn't be fit to sit in this chair and run this company. So, I'm not going to give you a single penny. If you didn't like the working conditions, you shouldn't have worked here. Nobody forced you. You want me to beg? I'll do anything for the lives of my children. Take your begging somewhere else. Please help me. I'm going to die. And I'm going to do my job. You should have more self-respect than to beg like this. Hello? Send security up here, quick! I want someone up here right away. That's right, now! Mommy read this to us. Oh, this, this one one's too. good. This one, too. Mom likes reading to us. You guys can read books on your own, too, right? I can read just like my mom. The other night when Mommy didn't come home, my brother read us a story. Oh, is that right? How oh, nice. You guys aren't giving Sally a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> oh, they're no trouble at all. You've raised some fine children. They're a credit to you. If you'll excuse me now. Thank you for all that you've done, Sally. Hey guys, I have to speak with Sally for a minute outside. Emre, why don't you show Sally how you can clean up the table for me? 
Mom, have you been crying? No, I'm fine. Why should I cry? This way, please. Mm -hmm. I said what I said, and then he threw me out. He doesn't care about his workers. How can people be so cruel like that, so mean like that? All the man cares about is making more money. No cruelty goes unpunished forever. God might give him a certain amount of time, but does not forgive the sin. Those who understand this will be brought under the wings of his mercy. Hakan finally turn up? I found him sooner. <sighs> you see, Hakan is remarried. He's remarried? Mm-hmm. <laughs> He wouldn't listen to what I had to say, but if you went and talked to him... Oh no, I don't think I could do that. How can I go to somebody who treated me so badly to beg for help from a man who's decided to ignore his own children? You're not going to beg for anything. You're going to demand that he do what's right. Just remember, you're fighting to do what's best for your children. You're strong because you're a good mother. Thank you. I love them enough to do whatever it takes, even if it means putting my pride aside. I'm going to go and talk to Hakan, just for my children. I'm going to do it for them, for them. I know that you're doing the right thing. See you soon. I'll see you soon. How are you, Hakan? What are you doing here? Hakan, I'm asking you for help. I've made a new life for myself, Suna. I'm not in a position to help you right now. You have to solve your own problems. It's not for me, Hakan. This is for the sake of our children. Hmm. Just give me some time to get myself in order. I just need a little time. Hakan, I don't have any time. I'm dying. Of cancer. Hakan? What's the matter? <sighs> Who is that? <coughs> oh, it's that woman you married. That factory worker. The mother of his children. The guy you sent out here to bother us the other day wasn't good enough, huh? Would you please listen to reason? Don't you have any respect for yourself? Aren't you embarrassed to come over here? And you dare to ask me to listen to you? I've had it. Tell her to leave us alone. Nazan, just listen to her, please. Hakan. Nazan. I'm not asking for myself. I'm here for my children. What for? Some money? No. Then what? See, I'm very sick. The factory I was working at had unsafe working conditions. I just want to leave my kids with their father. For God's sake, have mercy. Oh. And you expect me to believe your story? You just want to dump your kids on me so you can be free. You want to cause friction between Hakan and me, don't you? Nazan. Suna isn't that kind of a person. Are you going to defend her? Just great, Hakan. Just great. What a funny coincidence. She comes to our house just two days after we got married. Well, I'm not buying it. This is too much of a coincidence for me. She's making it up. Things like that only happen in movies. Now make up your mind. You can either go with her, or stay with me. Uh. Nazan, why do you have to be so hard on the poor woman? Maybe she's telling the truth. I'm positive that she's lying to us. So I'll prove it to you. What's the name of that factory she worked at? How should I know that? Marriage or something, I think. What for? You'll see. Here. As you will see in my report, she was fine when I examined her, and it was a thorough exam. Just as I suspected. She's faking it. Can I have a copy of this report? I must show this to my husband right away. It's normally against company policy, but if it's that important to you... You're very sweet. I've completed my research, Mr. Marriage. My paper thanks you for all your help. Well, how can one say no to the press? Hmm. 
Is there anything that you can tell me now about the results of your research? You can read about it in the paper in two days. Oh. Uh, oh, okay then. You have a good day. Have a good day. Doesn't Daddy know that you're sick? Why didn't he take you to the doctor? <sighs> Honey, nobody needs to take me. I already went to the doctor and got my medicine. Don't you worry about it. Eat your dinner. <clears throat> Emre? Emre, baby, eat your dinner. Come on. Hakan knows I won't do it. They're not my kids. If I want children, I'll have my own. And that awful woman lied. Ah, oh, you poor dear. But why would she lie about all that? It's simple. She's looking for money. I know her kind. They're all the same. Hakan didn't want to believe that she was lying to him. But he couldn't deny the doctor's report. Papa, he's been acting so strange lately. If it was up to him, I would take in those kids first thing tomorrow. Hello, Papa. How are you? Ugh. Let's not talk about this again, okay? What's it to me? They're not my kids. They're not my blood. Why should I take them in? I don't know why you are so stuck on this subject, Papa. Why do you insist on forcing these children upon me? Honey, it's my conscience. I can't let those kids grow up homeless. Okay, it's your decision. Okay, you too. I love you. I love you too. Okay, I've got to get going. Thanks for coming by. You're a good friend. I'll see you tonight at the reception. We'll have fun. Take care of yourself and say hi to Hakon for me, okay? I will. See you tonight. Miss? Hello. This is private property. Nazan is your name, yes? Do I know you, sir? We haven't met before, but I would like to tell you a story that may be familiar to you. Would you please indulge the fancy of an old man? Look, I'm tired of stories. Everyone wants to tell me a story, and everyone wants something from me. What am I? Some kind of charity foundation? Aha! Uh -huh. A charity. That's a good idea. You are really getting on my nerves. I have lots of things that I need to do. Go tell your story somewhere else, okay? Do you know this little girl? For God's sakes, of course I don't. And I don't want to know her. Now just go away! Are you sure? Okay. Who is she? Just tell me so you can get out of my life already. It's you. Me? It's you with your mother. My mother? And now, will you permit me to tell my story? I knew this lady. She was my neighbor. She lost her husband in a car accident. Soon after, she was diagnosed with a disease. It turns out she was dying. So she left her precious little girl at an orphanage. All she wanted for her baby was a kind-hearted family who would give her a good home and she gave the people at the orphanage something for her baby, something from mother to child. It was something that the child could read when she was old enough to understand what her mother was saying, that she once had a mother who loved her. Well, I don't believe you. She wrote this letter to give to her daughter, to you, her only child. Please leave my house right now. You're lying to me. I don't believe you. This is all some kind of a big lie. Perhaps you should ask your father. He will tell you the truth. Papa, can you 
come over? We need to talk right away, please. What that man told you today was the truth. All of it. So then, I'm not your daughter? I have always thought of you as my very own daughter. I swear it. But you lied to me. Everybody lied to me. Why would you keep news like this from me until now? Why, Papa? <laughs> Look, your mother and I, what mattered most to us was that we provide you with a good home so that you could enjoy a happy childhood. We did absolutely everything we possibly could for you, as if you were our own child. Dear sweetheart, I'm sorry I wasn't by your side when you were growing up. I love you dearly, and I want you to love the nice family that took you in like their own child. I only ask one thing from you. Always be there for people like you who do not have anyone to turn to. Do whatever you can to help them. I love you, sweetheart. Your mother. Oh, God. I can't believe this. stunned. This news changes everything. How can I go on with my life now? <laughs> Maybe things will be even better now. Maybe there's something you think you lost, but maybe you've gained something greater. Mahmoud, sir. I... What's your name, woman? <gasps> it's Suna, sir. Huh? Your son's ex-wife, Suna. Suna who? Uh... Suna? So, it's you. What are you doing here? How dare you? Get the hell out of here. Get going. Fetty, call the police. Your grandchildren. Sir, I'm real sick. Your grandchildren, see, they're going to be alone. No one to raise them, although you've never shown any interest in helping them before. Please help them now. You stole my son away from me. Now get out of my sight. Get out of here. You're a very good boy. Did you finish all your other homework? Almost all. Okay, go ahead and finish up. We're gonna sit down to dinner soon. Fatma's getting the table ready. How are you, Suna? I'm okay. How did it go? Not good. Have you decided what to do with the children? I have no other choice to give them up to the orphanage. <laughs> What's wrong, Mom? Did we do something to make you cry? I'm not crying, honey. I'm not crying. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby, I'm Please fine. Don't cry again, Mom. How come you're not ready to go out? You can go out if you want. I don't feel up to it. No. I won't go without you.
that bag for? It's for you guys. Why? Are we going somewhere? <laughs> Come here, sweethearts. I want to talk to you. Go ahead and sit down. There's my princess. You're getting so big. Okay, now. You guys know that I'm sick. We hear you coughing. But you'll get better if you take your medicine. <laughs> Baby medicine can't help the kind of sickness I have. So I have to go away. Well, what about us? While I'm in the hospital, and maybe even later than that, you'll be staying somewhere else. Someplace that's very nice, and where nice people take care of children. Death is just a part of life, and it's very normal. It's part of God's plan. Mom, <laughs> what will happen to us if you die? Who will take care of us? Who will love us? God will love you and always be with you. Remember, you guys will never be alone. But you won't be with us. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere. I want to live in our house with you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's you. The orphanage people are coming. I just wanted to check in on you and the children. <laughs> I'm going to the hospital. The children are going to the orphanage. Mm. They're so upset. <laughs> My strength is gone. I can't go on. <laughs> Would you like me to talk to the kids for you? very sick. She's going to die, isn't she? Then she really needs to see you guys happy in her last days, doesn't she? But Mr. Solly, how can we be happy when our mama is dying? We don't just disappear when we pass away. Instead, we leave this troubled world and journey to a land of paradise. Is mom going to heaven? Your mother is a very good person, and she raised some very good kids. She'll begin her journey knowing you'll always pray for her. But most of all, she knows that you'll always be there to take care of each other. When mom dies, will she see us? Will she know what's happening to us? She will if that's what God wants. Answer this. If your mother had to travel to a far off land so she could get better, wouldn't you want her to go there? Yes, I would. Me too. Well then, what if she got better while she was there, and she was very happy, and had a great house with nice gardens? And what if she invited you to come visit her? I would love to visit her in a place like that. Well, that's where your mom is going, and she'll be waiting for you there, where she'll have no more pain. Who knows? Her new house might even be next door to the prophets and other wonderful neighbors. Isn't it worth it if she achieves such happiness? Then why don't you wipe away your tears? Your mom should see you strong so she doesn't worry about you guys. And never forget, she's with you, here in your heart, in the love you feel for her. Soon, you look very tired. You look like you're going to faint. Go in and rest a little bit. No, Fatma. The kids must see me nice and strong. Take care of my brother and my sister. <laughs> oh, <love>. mommy! <laughs> oh, my babies! <laughs> my babies! <laughs> Oh, 
I'll just go inside and get their bags. I'll get them. Mom. Mommy. Now don't be sad. Don't be picky about your food. Oh, we study hard. We got a deal, huh? You promise? Promise me. All right, children. for someone named Suna. Is this where she lives? She's in the hospital. You knew she was sick, didn't you? Are you some kind of relative? In a way. That horrible factory. They killed her. And they had the nerve to give her a made-up report saying she was fine. They made a fake report? Why, of course. Do you know how many people got sick because of that factory? Ask the factory's doctor. The workers' health is good, but they ruined that young woman's life. And the poor kids. What they have gone through makes me sick to my stomach. And their dad is such a bum. Can you tell me which hospital she's in? Honestly, I don't really know. Whichever one's the cheapest. That ex-husband of hers left her penniless. I know. Do you think you could tell me Suna's last name? Uh, why do you want to know? Chalishgan. Could it have been Chalishgan? That's it. I should be going. Thank you. So you don't have a Suna Chalishgan in here? No, she's not in our records. But I've tried all the local hospitals. It's going to be difficult finding her that way. Isn't there someone you can ask? No. No. Thanks anyway. Good luck. Where can she be? Where?
I spoke with the doctor. He's going to be fine. We're going to release him shortly, right after the doctor checks his x-rays again. Thank you very much. I'll wait for you in the lobby. Hang on. Excuse me, sir? Yes? Do you remember me? You came to my house wanting to talk to my husband, Hakan? Hmm? I'm very embarrassed by the way I treated you that day. I wish I had responded to you more charitably. Say, do you have any idea where I could find his ex-wife? She's here. She's upstairs. That's so weird. If I didn't have that accident, I wouldn't have found her. Good God. Well, things do happen for a reason. Would you like me to take you up to her room? If you would. Sure. Remember me? <coughs> you. You're here. <coughs> but why? <coughs> Please try to relax. <coughs> See, I've come to apologize to you. I made a big mistake. I'm so sorry. I would like to take care of your children if you'll permit me. <coughs> My kids, <coughs> my kids are in the orphanage. <coughs> Anybody? Anybody? We need a nurse in here right now. She can't breathe. Okay, I'm here. Goodness, Hakan, I've been trying to reach you. I'm at the hospital. No, it's not me. I'm all right. I came to see Suna. She's in critical condition. Come right away. I was wrong about Suna. The doctor at the factory lied to me. Suna is very sick. I just talked to her doctor here. What did he say? She doesn't have much time left. I'm so sorry. What about the kids? The kids are at an orphanage. We need to get them out of there, Hakan. They need to be home with us. Okay, but weren't you the one who said you didn't want anything to do with those kids? I know. Listen, if my mom and dad didn't take me from an orphanage, I would have grown up without a family. It made me realize how wrong I was to say what I said. I ruined everything. Oof. What to do now? Go to your dad. Let him know his grandchildren need him. Not a chance. He has a stone for a heart. I don't think he'd understand. But you still need to try, Hakan. <sighs> Just give him a chance to change. He's still your dad. How long can you guys stay mad at each other? Okay. I'll go talk to him. I hope you're right. Come on, I'll take you home. Thanks, Nazan. You've made me very happy today. Well, look at you. On your feet again, I see. They have completed all the necessary tests. And I'm fine, thank you. You're a truly good person. Am I a good person? Good enough to become a mother?
Your newspaper, sir. Fetty, I don't have my glasses. Can you read me the story? It's the story about a woman named Suna Chalishkan. That's right. Read it then. Suna Chalishkan, who had been working in a chemical factory, is about to lose her life, her children placed in an orphanage. The factory is owned by Mr. Hashmet Merich, who continues to expose his employees to very hazardous working conditions. He stands by and watches in silence as his workers keep getting sick by breathing in the fumes from the gas that leaks out of the faulty containers that store the chemicals. Containers that he purchased just because they were cheap? Who does this reporter think he is? What does he think he's doing? He ruined me. Oh my God. Come in. Hashmet Merich? That's right. You need to come with us. We have some questions about the way you run your business. But you can't arrest me because of this idiot's story. That reporter you were talking about has turned over all of the evidence he found to the police. Can you please come with us now, sir? What about my factory? It's closed down until after the investigation. Come with us. Continue to follow the same instructions. Yes, Doctor. That's the doctor I talked to before. Like I said, bring him in doctor. here later. Yes, Doctor. Yes? We're here for Suna Chalishkan. Mm -hmm. They said that she's no longer in intensive care. Did she pass on? No, not yet. But I'm afraid that her struggle is coming to an end. She's in room 212 down the end of the hall. Thank you. Suna, where are my, my kids? Where are my kids? Suna, please forgive me. I should never have left you all alone. The children, what they need. I'm going to do everything I can to have them live with us. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'll do it. Hakan, I don't want to go until I know the kids <coughs> will be living with you. Hakan is going to get the children. I promise you they will be taken care of. And my grandkids will be the rightful heirs to my estate. I'm going to do my very best to show them the same love and compassion that my parents showed me, so you can rest in peace. that gives them their final peace is the one that created them. How great is the power of the Almighty One. At the end, we always return to Him. And at the end of this journey, the ones that had faith and did good deeds will be the ones in paradise, where they will dwell for eternity. How blessed are the ones that earn this rank and reunite with their Lord.